ago, when I used to live in Los Angeles, I used to actually help set up sewing factories. And I had a lot of different designers come to me and ask me for help on techniques and ways to make things fast, professional, and profitable. That's how I invented the sequins and ribbon foot, as a matter of fact. But today I'm going to show you the pearls and piping foot. And one of the people that contacted me was a manufacturer that was very frustrated the year these beautiful fringed bead or beaded fringe came out. They were like, wow, we really want to sew this on, but this is not profitable because the, first of all, the beads, the beaded fringe costs a lot of money and the time spent hand sewing this on was really eating through their profits. So I hadn't seen the, the trim yet and I had them send me some because I just, I, I just couldn't envision it and oh my gosh, when I saw it I was so impressed. And then uh, came up with a way for them to sew it on without having a problem. I tried all kinds of things. I even tried taping the beads to tape to keep them from dangling and then I was like well a manufacturer is not going to want to do that and but they don't want to wash anything they just want to sew it and be done with it and get it off to market so this is what I came up with I take the trim and it's it's normally sewn onto a ribbon but sometimes not and if it isn't you can sew it onto a ribbon to make it prettier you place the presser foot onto the ribbon And then take a small cord, and this is a rat tail cording, that's what they call it. It's actually a satin cord, and it comes in 8th inch and 16th uh, inch, and uh, it's, it's really pretty. In this case, we're, we can leave it in, and we can also save it for later. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch, and this is when you want to be accurate. You want to make sure you sew straight. This is pearls and piping and the trim slides right underneath the tunnel so I'm not in charge of guiding the rat tail cording. All I'm in charge of is guiding the ribbon straight. It doesn't matter if you're centered on the ribbon, you just want to make sure that you sew or keep the ribbon straight. I'll just go ahead now and, and if you notice my hand positioning is always holding the trim or the fabric that you're sewing up for the least amount of holding possible. Imagine a manufacturer having a bunch of people working for them all working like this all day long. Um, they would have a lot of pain and suffering and that actually was happening. We had one company that had uh, my father and I, Don Rowley, inventor of the Hukadol, and uh, go into this to their manufacturing plant and we helped them to sew ergonomically so that they didn't have as many workman's comp claims. And uh, one of the things that is important is that you never lift your elbows when sewing, always rest your body and, and if, so if you're doing this you're actually, you know, it hurts. You don't want to hurt yourself, you want to sew and keep sewing and sewing and sewing. So here we go. So now we have this cording stitched on the edge of the ribbon. And since the Pearls and Piping Foot's tunnel is engineered as a rooftop, it's not going to be able to escape the cording, which if you look here, you can see that the cord is stuck underneath the foot. It's not me guiding it, it's the presser foot. So that means now we can go ahead and insert this into our fabric. There's more than one way of doing this. You can sew twice, and we want to have right sides together. Or you can sew once. Sewing twice is no glue required. Sewing once, you glue your, your trim in. And since we're speaking about manufacturing, they don't like to glue if they can avoid it. So I'm just going to stitch it in and show you how to sew it without pinning. Now if your sewing machine has needle positions, you're going to want to position your needle as far over to the left as possible. And, um, and if you can't get your needle over where you want it, you can take the presser foot off of the sewing machine. Slide the washer over. 
And now you have more needle positions to choose from. Remember that wash around the pearls and piping foot doubles your sewing machine's needle positions on every stitch your sewing machine has. Now we're going to go ahead and use a straight stitch, left needle position, and all I'm in charge of is, oh, straight stitch, I forgot to change my stitch. See how easily this sews in, and even though they're loose and my job is to guide my fabric and to keep it straight. The beads are crazy, flipping all over the place. But the fabric is in, and as long as I keep my eye not at the needle but ahead of it, I can't be surprised and have those beads get damaged. <laughs> These are some of the most beautiful beads. And I got them for a steal, probably because the manufacturers were having so much trouble signing them on. See how easy that is? Now, the hard part, sewing the beads into a seam. Uh, they're stitched on, but we could see them now. We're not going to be able to see them. Is it still going to be as easy as it was? Absolutely. Take and put your raw edges together. Nothing makes me happier than teaching you guys how to do something that seems difficult and making it easy for you. There we go, and go ahead and take it and place it underneath the foot. And just as before, we were not in charge of those beads not getting struck by the needle, and now we are also not. All we're doing is making sure that we keep this raw edge lined up with that raw edge. And it does not require straight pins. As you watch my, sh my show, you'll realize that I probably, I, I'm, I don't know how many times I'll use a straight pin, but probably one in a thousand techniques. And then of course you'd secure the beginning and the end with your reverse, which this reverse is very slow, but I'm not sure why to do that. Here we go. Now we have the beads inside of the fabric. And the ribbon is protruding out. Now say you don't want that much ribbon to show, or you don't want any ribbon to show. Now you just take and you, your seam looks like this underneath. So there's no point in really pressing because that cording isn't going to allow that to press down really very well. And it's not that important anyway in this particular situation. Now we're going to take and we just want to fold our, all of our seam edges going toward the presser foot. And you can take the fabric and fold it. And just fold it a little bit. Oh my, 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 these are the biggest of the beaded fringe I've worked with yet. There we go. And this sewing machine does have a knee lift, but my table doesn't allow me to use it. There we go. And a knee lift would be raising the presser foot with a bar that allows you to move your knee and it lifts the presser foot. Remember that you do have the ability to raise your foot higher by pushing up harder on that lever in almost every sewing machine. Okay, so basically, all I ever do is plot out four inches ahead of the presser foot. And we can go ahead and we can secure the beginning by doing our reverse stitch. And then notice how I just hold my finger in one spot. And then I stop, and I plot out four inches ahead, and then I put my finger down there. And this is what I call planting my finger. I plant it, and I'm not actually pushing down really hard. Isn't this gorgeous? I sit there and I go, what am I going to make with this? Just a sample for you all to see? I don't know, maybe on another episode, I'll turn this into something. Another reason to subscribe to my channel is I'm just going to keep showing you more and more exciting, once complex and scary techniques, making them easy peasy, and you can either 
just enjoy the benefits of it or make money from your selling. Isn't that absolutely amazing how beautiful and clean and professional that looks? I tell you what, I want to make something with this. Be sure to subscribe so you find out exactly what I have planned for this beautiful sample of beaded fringe.